Hello and welcome to another video by electricalpereview.com. In this episode, I've got an example for you guys on synchronous machines, finding maximum power and torque angle examples. So the problem states a 60 Hertz, 300 RPM synchronous motor has an induced stator voltage of 1.2 kV and a supply voltage of 2.4 kV. Determine the electrical phase angle required for maximum active power, the equivalent mechanical torque angle, and the amount of maximum active power. Both voltages given are in line to neutral values. Okay, so I already wrote down all three equations we're going to be using in this problem for convenience, and they are the first, NS equals 120 times frequency over poles. NS is our synchronous speed in, in uh, RPMs. We're going to use that to find the number of poles in this machine. Then we're going to use that information to find our phase angles over here. And then we're going to use our power uh, formula to find maximum power. Power is our induced voltage times our supply voltage over our synchronous reactants times the sine of the electrical angle. And then last but not least, the electrical angle is equal to the number of poles, which is why we're using this equation here to find it, times our mechanical torque angle, alpha, divided by 2. And I just realized to solve this problem correctly, we need a synchronous reactance. So for the purpose of this problem, we're going to say synchronous reactance X of S equals J, uh, what do you think? We'll go with 2.1 ohms. Okay, you know I am a stickler for drawing out circuit diagrams to avoid errors. So what would this look like? We would have a supply voltage of E, and then we would have a synchronous reactance. This is X of S, and then we would have our induced stator voltage EO. Okay, the first thing is we're going to fill in our values. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick a color red that stands out. The first is E, our supply voltage. We were given that as a supply voltage of 2.4 kV. Now remember, this is a single phase equivalent circuit. So we need our line to neutral values, which the problem was nice enough to already give. So this is going to be plus 2.4 kV minus, and notice I'm doing it quickly. I'm just showing one line. This is grounded, or that's reference, all the way back to our supply E. So E is right here from plus to minus. So this is our E. Next, our synchronous reactance that we just made up for the sake of this problem. We said that was going to be J 2.1 ohms. So that's J 2.1 ohms. And uh, the induced stator voltage that the problem was also nice enough to give us in the line to neutral value of induced stator voltage of 1.2 kV. So this value right here is going to be um, plus 1.2 kV. Hmm, does this look right to everybody? This would also be our plus E of X, which of course. We're not using for this problem, but I'm just going to go ahead and show it there anyways. Okay, this looks good to me. Let's begin. So determine the electrical phase angle required for maximum active power. So we're going to start with this equation right here, 2. So 2 says that power equals our EO, which we know is what? EO is 1.2 kV, and this is a minus sign right here times our E, which is, we know, 2.4 kV, divided by our synchronous reactance, which is J, 2.1 ohms, times sine of delta. Delta is our electrical phase angle difference between E and EO, or our electrical torque angle. So this right here is a multiplier, right? We know that the maximum value that sine can have is going to equal to 1. So we can set this equal to, if we set this term right here equal to 1 equals sine of delta, we could solve for the angle that we would need to get this to equal 1 as sine of inverse 1 of 1 would equal delta. And of course, when we punch that into our calculator, we get an angle of 90. So an electrical phase angle of 90 here would equal 1. So if we took the 
sine of 90, that would equal to 1. And of course, all we did right now is we just derived the formula for maximum active power, or Pmax. And of course, we're dealing in watts. So this would equal, hang on one second. So this would equal 1.37 kW, that's this amount right here, times, of course, 1, I'm just drawing out to demonstrate, times 1, which is this term here. So we know our maximum power is, of course, 1.37 times 1 is 1.37. So our maximum power is 1.37 kW. So that solves this question right here, the amount of active power and an angle of 90 would be required to get um, the sine of that angle to equal to 1, which would give us our maximum power. So that solves right here the equivalent, sorry, the electrical phase angle required for it. And then next it's saying the equivalent mechanical torque angle. Okay, so we used this one right here. Now we're going to use 2, sorry, we're going to use 3 and 1. 3 says our electrical torque angle delta is equal to the number of poles times our mechanical angle alpha divided by 2. So we know delta, we just solved for that. We're trying to find this, that's just a number, so we need to find poles. So that's what this guy's going to do for us up here. So let's write that out. Um, we're going to rewrite that to solve for poles. So the number of poles is going to equal 120 times F, our frequency, divided by synchronous speed, NS. So we can plug in our values. We have 120 times, this is a 60 hertz machine, right? So 120 times 60 hertz. I always write down your units, don't be lazy. Divided by our synchronous speed, NS, of course, is going to be 300 RPMs. So all divided by 300 RPMs. This is going to give us P equals... 24 poles. And that's the number of poles in both the stator and rotor. They're always going to be the same. Okay, we know our P up here. I think it's time to solve for alpha. So we're running out of room, but I'm going to rewrite that to solve for alpha. We can say alpha equals, we're going to have delta times 2 divided by P. Once again, all I did was I solved for alpha right here. Okay, So we already know what delta has to be for maximum power. We found that to be 90 degrees. So I've got 90 degrees times 2, which is just a constant, divided by our number of poles we just found to be 24. So we punch that in our calculator and we come up with an answer of 7.5 degrees. Now, what's the difference between alpha and delta, you say? Well, it's pretty easy. Okay, just erase that to make some room. Hope you're not mad. So we're going to show the difference between alpha and delta. If this outer ring right here is our stator, and this inner inner circle is our rotor, R, say this is, one, say this is our south pole on our stator, and this is N. Typically, these are going to be lined up perfectly. That's when we have a mechanical phase angle of zero. But when they're not lined up perfectly, when it looks something like this, this angle right here is going to be our mechanical torque angle alpha. And what that's saying, if we physically measured the angle that the pole of our rotors were slightly behind the poles of our stators, we could actually physically mo uh, measure it with like an angleometer or a protractor. That would give us a physical mechanical angle alpha. Next, our electrical angle delta. Right here, you should notice by now, this is going to be a phasor diagram template. If we drew our applied voltage, and if we gave it at the time its angle was zero as a reference, so if this was our E, which is the applied voltage on the stator, line to neutral, and we also wanted to graph our induced stator voltage, EO, which of course is being induced by the excitation current in the rotor. So if this was EO, the amount that EO either lags or leads, and in this case it's obviously lagging, but essentially it's the angle between E and EO would give us delta. 
and that is the actual phase angle. So in this example right here, our delta would be our angle from E minus our angle from EO. So be very careful when you get questions that are asking for a torque angle, right, up here. Make sure you know if they're asking for mechanical or electrical and uh, vice versa. Be very careful. What if they give you one and you have to convert it to the other to solve the problem? So always be thinking. And that is it for example of synchronous machines looking at maximum power and torque angles. Hope you enjoyed. For more PE exam practice problems and to try our online review course, of course, you can come check us out at www.electricalpereview.com. We'll see you soon.